Berger just added two exciting new bullets into their lineup, and guess who's here to tell you all about them? Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. Very shortly, I'll be publishing an in-depth hands-on story covering Berger's all-new 153.5 grain long-range hybrid target 6.5 millimeter bullets. These bullets push the limits of ballistic consistency and ballistic performance in that long-range target application in the 6.5 caliber. I can't wait to see how they're gonna do in cartridges like 6.5 Creedmoor and 6.5 PRC. Today, I'm gonna get hands-on with another new bullet from Berger, the 205 grain 30 cal Elite Hunter bullet. The Berger 205 grain 30 cal Elite Hunter bullet is really targeted at 30 cal magnums for long range big game hunting. I'm talking Alaskan grade hunting where you've got large elk or similar class animals. You need to be super confident in the stopping power. This has the precision hunting jacket. It's got a high BC 0.322 G7 BC. So it makes it really well suited for some of these calibers like 300 PRC, which is what I used to try out this new bullet from Berger. It requires one in 11 twist or faster and has a diameter of 308 inches, as you would expect from a 30 cal bullet. Here's what I have in mind. What I want to do is talk through the loading setup and the components that I used to evaluate this bullet. I want to talk about the new range that I put in up at up at the top of the mountain, 100 yard range, talk about some of the results that I got there, and then run through the numbers from the laboratory testing that I did. So starting with components, of course, we've got the Berger 205 grain 30 cal Elite Hunter bullets. I've got brand new 300 PRC cases from Hornady. We've got Federal 215 large rifle magnum primers and ramshot magnum powder. This is a ball powder that meters really well and I've used it for a variety of loads, including 6.5 PRC, 300 PRC, and 300 Remington Ultra Mag. And on the equipment side, this is basically the same equipment setup that I used in my recently published video covering 6.5 PRC loads end to end. So if you wanna see that full process, you're gonna to wanna to check out that video. But I've got the Mech Marksman Press, I've got a Hornady 300 PRC, two die set with the micrometer seating stem. Absolutely love that, makes quick work of adjusting bullet seating depth and optimizing bullet seating depth. I've got the full auto trickler V3 system here. This is pretty much the best way to get to an ultra precise powder charge very quickly. And of course you can multitask while it's dumping the charge and trickling it up to the exact weight. I've also got the Primal Rights competition primer seeder, which is, I think, the best tool for ultra-precise priming of cases for match type applications. So this is a great test setup to evaluate ballistics and to do load development. But I didn't do full load development. I pretty much went to Ramshot's site, downloaded their load data, and went for a max charge. I'm not suggesting that you do that. That's where I started, and it was based on load data that I had already validated with Hornady's bullets in a similar weight class. So my charge weight was 80 and a half grains of random shot magnum. Again, use this data at your own risk. Always validate with a couple published sources for your load data and always start below and work your way up to max charge weight. So I've got 80 and a half grains of random shot magnum. I've got the Burger 205 Elite Hunters seated to a depth of 3.609 inches. When I was testing Hornady's 205 grain bullets, I got about a 0.6 inch group with this load, the 80 and a half grains, and that's why I started there. A full load workup was outside of the scope of what I did for this particular story, so I thought I would go with that low data. Now, I took it up to 100 yards. I've got the new mountaintop rifle range. I've already talked about how I've got steel set up at various distances. Seth Gardner from DM Targets came over and we really equipped this mountaintop range as a great sort of PRS training ground. Well, just yesterday, for the first time, I shot at 100 yards with a proper 100 yard range setup, but it was a little bit precarious. I had winds upwards of 20 to 25 miles per hour. I recorded 20 miles per hour on the Kestrel, but it was gusting faster than that. It was pretty much 
a sandstorm and I had heat boil like absolutely crazy. So it was more like validating the range dynamics and getting my target board set up and trying to find what was exactly 100 yards away and leveling the spot, that kind of thing. Today, I went back up to the mountaintop range and had better conditions. Now, I should have been out there earlier, but I cleared a larger flat area and put some concrete form boards over an inch thick down, and that really helped to quell some of the bounce I was getting off of concrete blocks that I had that were kind of not very level for my initial pass up the mountain. So I got better results. The first three shots that I had today up at that range went into a one half inch group. And I thought, hey, for a hunting bullet, this is really, really great. But at this point, I'm starting to get a lot of heat boil again and everything is heating up. And so I didn't get to what I would consider my real goal, which is five shot groups that I'm confident of. So I'm gonna capture that as kind of a follow-up item and I'll post updates accordingly. So I was happy with that. And in terms of ballistic performance, velocities were on par with what I was seeing with my other loads. And you'd expect that with the same weight class bullet. Now with that high BC, that 0.322, G7BC, that means we're gonna get really, really good ballistic performance. And with Berger's precision hunting jacket technology, we're also gonna get reliable expansion and good sh internal shock and good lethal performance. This is what you want in a hunting bullet. Now, while I was up there, I also saw some rock checks. And being a hunting bullet, I thought it was only appropriate to paste a few of those, which we did. And it was, it was pretty brutal, I will say. Uh, it wasn't a pretty sight. But of course, that's not what these bullets are for. To really evaluate proper hunting performance, we would need to have something like an elk or that class of animal, a grizzly bear, you know. Things that are really massive where you really need the power and the performance of a cartridge like 300 Win Mag or 300 PRC. So, I'm happy with the performance of these bullets. I'm gonna be doing some follow-up with five shot groups with the concrete bench that I'm building up at the top of the hill. Uh, so bear with me for that. Then it was time to take these bullets into the laboratory for a set of tests that I've pretty much standardized as a part of my tested series when I'm covering bullets. The first thing I took a look at was the weight data and I'm using a scale just like this one, A&D FX120i it's accurate down to two hundredths of a grain. I took 20 samples, uh, bullets, from the two boxes that I got from Burger. I will note now that these are pre-production samples. So the bullets you get could be a little bit better than these. These were early run samples. I had to get them a little bit early to get this story published in time for the public introduction of these bullets. So keep that in mind when we take a look at the data. For the 20 bullets, for weight, we had an average of 204.98. So the average is only off by two hundredths of a grain. That is very, very close, obviously. The standard deviation was 0 0.061 grains, and the extreme spread on weight was 0 0.220 grains. Very good. Next was the diameter data. And when I do diameter tests, for bullets, I take two readings on the bullets that are rotated 90 degrees from each other. So that I get basically not only the diameter variation from bullet to bullet, but the diameter variation for a particular bullet. So what we had here was a standard deviation of one ten thousandth of an inch. That's incredibly good. And an extreme spread of two ten thousandths of an inch an average of 0 0.3077 inches for diameter. For length data, I took another 10,000th micrometer and took a reading for each bullet and recorded that. Now, these bullets are hollow point bullets and therefore there will be a bit more variation than with something like a machined tip bullet or a polymer tip bullet. So for the 20 bullets, we had a standard deviation of 3.3 thousandths of an inch, an extreme spread of 12.4 thousandths of an inch, and an average of 1.4897 inches.
At the end of the day, I'm really impressed with these Burger 205 grain 30 cal Elite Hunter bullets. They look good on paper and they also performed well in the field. I'm confident with a bit more load development and a proper concrete shooting wrench at the top of the hill, these group sizes are gonna shrink and I can't wait to try these out to 1,000 yards. So if you've got a 30 cal Magnum, like a 300 PRC, a 300 Weatherby, or a 300 Win Mag, give these Burger 205 grain Elite Hunter bullets a look. But what do you think? What do you think of these bullets? Are you shooting bullets like these? Are you looking for bullets like these? What kind of big game are you hunting with a 30 cal Magnum? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. Also, don't forget, I've got these shirts at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'm on Patreon. Don't forget to subscribe with notifications. I appreciate your support. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.